Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck. This one a bit jankier, built around Stormwild Caprador, the 3 mana 1 3 bird goat from Ikoria with flying, saying if non combat damage would be dealt to the Caprador, prevent the damage and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Caprador for each 1 damage prevented this way. It's a very interesting card that we can kind of build around by including a bunch of these damage based sweepers like Storm's Wrath in our deck, which will not only wipe the boards but also put in this case 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Caprador to help us grow it, and then we've got a bunch of these other combos that uh, work quite well with the Caprador. And then the other threat in the deck is Hactos, the Unscarred as a 4 mana 6-1 Legendary Human Warrior, that when it enters the battlefield we have to choose a random number between 2, 3 and 4, and then Hactos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number, so it has weakness to the chosen number, much like Achilles and then Hactos is forced to attack each combat if able. So the reason we're playing Hactos alongside a Caprador is that it has a lot of the same kind of synergies going for it, in the sense that it also survives most of the damage-based sweepers, as long as the number that Hactos gets randomly doesn't correspond to the sweepers convert mana cost, otherwise it will still die to it. But let's say we roll a 2 or a 3 with Hactos, then Storm's Wrath will not damage it, and that way we get to keep both of our threats in play while getting to wipe the board. And then we've got some other sweepers in the deck too, with Deafening Clarion dealing 3 damage to each creature, and can also give our creatures a lifelink, so that's also very good with both uh, Caprador and Hactos. And then another very nice card in the deck is Response Resurgence, which we can cast Response for 2 mana, dealing 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creatures, so we can just use it as removal on the opponent's creature, but we can also target our own Caprador with the Response half to deal 5 damage to it and put 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so that's another way of growing it very quickly. And then the Resurgence half is particularly useful alongside Hactos as a 5 mana sorcery, saying creatures we control gain first strike and vigilance until end of turn, and after this main phase there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. And giving Hactos first strike means that even if the opponent has a creature able to block Hactos with a random number, we will still be able to attack into it as a 6 power first striking creature. Vigilance means we will still have Hactos on defense, and Hactos is very difficult for the opponent to attack into. And if the opponent does doesn't have any creatures capable of blocking Hactos, we can potentially deal 12 damage with this, so it does have a lot of potential with both the Caprador and Hactos. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have the full playset of Perforosis Intervention as a sorcery for X and a red, that can potentially deal twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker, so we can just use this as removal for the opponent's creature or planeswalker, but the interesting part here is if we use it in combination with our Stormwild Caprador, let's say we have 5 mana in play, X equals 4, so we can deal 8 damage to our own Caprador and put 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and attack right away, so it does have a lot of upside there as well. And if we don't have a Caprador in play, we can still use this as a finisher by making an X1 a red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste that we have to sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit of card selection with Cathartic Reunion, Fire Prophecy and Thrill of Possibility, because we do kind of operate as a combo deck that's trying to assemble Caprador plus a big burn spell or Hactos plus Response Resurgence, so we do have a lot of 2 card combos that we wouldn't mind drawing into, and these uh, card selection cards give us that consistency to assemble those combos, so Cathartic Reunion have to discard 2 additional cards as an additional cost and then draw 3, We've got Fire Prophecy as a 3 damage burn spell, and we can also put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library and draw a card. And then Thrill of Possibility, we have to discard one card as an additional cost, and then we get to draw two cards at instant speed. Then we've already covered Response Resurgence. At 3 mana, of course, we've got our 4 Capra Doors, which we want to draw in our opening hand each time. And then we also have two copies of Gideon Blackblade as an extra threat that lines up well against decks playing cards like Shatter the Sky, because both uh, Caprador and Hactos still die to the Shatter the Sky, but Gideon is going to be a Planeswalker in the opponent's turn, and during our turn it's going to be a 4-4 creature with Indestructible, and also prevents all damage that would be dealt to it, so it still survives our own Storm's Wrath, so it still has that going for it. And Gideon also lines up quite well against Teferi, which won't be able to bounce it with a minus 3, so plenty of situations where Gideon's a good threat. 
Then we've got our two Deafening Clarions, four Hactos, four Storm's Wrath, and then two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death as an additional removal spell that can also eventually return a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter or an extra loyalty counter, so it can get back one of our threats. And if the opponent somehow manages to steal our Stormwild Capridor, our deck is pretty bad at killing it since all our removal is damage based, but Elspeth Conquers Death can still potentially exile our own Capridor if the opponent steals it. And then last but not least, two copies of Chandra Awakened Inferno, which can act as another sweeper with the minus three, dealing three damage to each non-elemental, and that also helps us grow the Caprador, and can also just act as an extra win condition that's uncounterable, so great against counterspell decks. The plus two can slowly burn the opponent, and the minus X can be used as another spot removal spell, or as a way to grow the Caprador if we just need to close out the game right away. And then mana base, 24 lands, pretty evenly split between red and white since we are trying to cast Hactos after all. Two copies of Castle Ardenvale as an extra mana sink, and then six planes, eight mountains, four Sacred Foundry, and four Temple of Triumph. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, so it could be cycling, in which case Clarion is pretty good, Caprador should be okay, so yeah, I'll keep. And then, don't think I need to keep Reunion since I'm pretty happy with my hand. Just looking for more ways of dealing damage to my own Caprador. Grim Initiate, alright, so it's not your typical cycling deck. Storm's Wrath should be okay. Opponent appears to be a creature deck. Cauldron Familiar, alright, so some sort of Mardu Sacrifice deck. Well, I guess if they have claimed the Firstborn to steal my Caprador and then sacrifice it, that would be bad. Cruel Celebrant, sure. And a Ghost Form to get it back. Still probably gonna Deafening Clarion here. Could also Storm's Wrath first and then next turn, Clarion to gain more life. I guess I could buy that. It's a bit more mana efficient too. Can be Lurus into maybe the ghost form to protect Lurus. Alright, so points at 13. Intervention can uh, deal 6, but I can double response, and that should be 15. All right, that was a quick one. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got a reasonable hand, so we're missing something to damage our own Caprador, but maybe Thrill can help us there. Facing potentially mono reds. Our deck does have a lot of sweepers in it, so this should be a winnable matchup. So I could intervention the champion, but it doesn't seem needed. I'll save it for the Caprador. So I think I just reunion, discarding Thrill and Elspeth Conquer's death. And then, of course, a mono red deck is going to have a very hard time killing Caprador. So, I've got the mana to play Caprador and Hactos. I've got some burn spells. Shieldbreaker, okay. We 
we do have to watch out for combo tricks if our opponent has, let's say, the Rimrock Knight. They could pump one of their creatures and still kill the Caprador. Combo damage, of course, still works. Although, might be able to just race Annex. Let's say they do have Amber Cleave next turn, I guess that could hurt. But then I could keep up Fire Prophecy. Or I can just play Hactos. And then next turn maybe kill the creature that Hactos isn't protected from. Yeah, let's do that. We hit four, so has protection from all the opponent's creatures right now. And next turn I could intervention for four, putting eight counters on the Caprador. Or I could play it safe and keep a prophecy to deal with Annex. Bonecrusher Giants. Interesting to note about Bonecrusher Giants. If they use Stomp, it says damage can be prevented. So that's a little awkward if we went and uh, damage their own Caprador, because then Stomp means we would kill the, the Caprador since the damage prevention doesn't happen, so that's a card we have to be very careful around. Well, Conqueror's Death seems pretty ideal to deal with Annex. Or I could just uh, prefer this intervention for X equals 2, Fire Prophecy Annex. Now let's do this. And then we'll keep Caprador on defense for now. And then next turn we can maybe attack with it and kill our opponents. Can intervention for X equals 5, 10 counters, so this deals 11 plus 6 from Hactos. Should be enough. The best our opponent can do here is probably Amber Cleave, so this would deal 10 plus another 4 damage. That's not enough to kill us. So I guess now the only cards I need to be worried about is our opponent having another Bonecrusher Giant. Because then they could kind of uh, prevent damage from being prevented. And then uh, we would look pretty silly targeting our own Caprador. So we don't have to go for it, but I kind of want to. And even if they do kill it, I guess I would get it back with Conqueror's Death next turn. I guess I don't even have to shock myself, I can just do 4x equals 4. Alright, that worked out. Get in there. Potent can block Hactos. They probably can't kill Caprodors, so I think they're dead. Scorching Dragonfire. Thanks for the 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And that does it. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yorion deck. Yeah, the sand's fine. We'll need to find another way of growing the Caprodors, so a Storm's Wrath would be ideal. And if our opponent is playing a version with Agent of Treachery, that's of course going to be pretty bad for us. We've got Caprodors for days. I might discard one to the Thrill. Don't think I'll have time to deploy all three. Fail wishes, what's our opponent wishing for? Gets a Storm's Wrath? <laughs> uh, if only they knew. Think I still discard one? Well, that Storm's Wrath is looking pretty awkward right now. Next turn I could double response to get in there. No sword can pierce my scales. Your 
but uh, the Grazer can also block here. Could play another Caprador right now. Funny thing also, Sarkhan will deal one to the Caprador to grow it. So, it's actually good for us to have Sarkhan in play right now. Alright, let's... Uh, attack Sarkhan. And then if they block with a dragon, I can response my own Caprador. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so I guess they must not have had ways of dealing with the Caprador otherwise. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Don't love this hand with the two Chandras, although we can discard one to the Thrill. And then we still have Temple to find extra lands. Alright, we'll try it. And we'll keep a Plains. And then we're looking for Caprador. Opponent on Jeskai. Charming Prince, so this is looking like potentially a Winota deck. Which, we don't have any removal that kills Winota at instant speed, since this can only target attacking creatures and Fire Prophecy only deals 3 damage. Justice Strike would have been potentially a solution, but the problem with Justice Strike is that it doesn't really grow the Caprador unless it already has a bunch of plus one plus one counters on it. Alright, we found the Caprador's. Next turn maybe cast Deafening Clarion. Looks like Rapun might be setting up an end of turn Racy Alarm into Winota. Still not much I can do about it. I can kill one of the tokens with Fire Prophecy and then maybe response my own Caprador. I think that's my plan here. Could have also used Fire Prophecy on my own creature to put them on a Tutron Clock, but if they go Racy Alarm into Winota, I want to limit the amount of uh, triggers they get to potentially find an agent to steal my Caprador. And as usual, they have the Winota. Probably not gonna have time for Chandra this game. Alright, so one non-human attacking, and they just found another Winota. It's not too bad, I guess. So I can Clarion, that way we remove all non-humans attack and hope for the best. Chandra. Well, that's gonna make two non-humans that are attacking. Winota, please no agent. And there's Agent of Treachery, oh boy. Well, we're probably dead now. Can play a Caprador and then chum block their Caprador. But I don't see how we win from that position. If I just play Hactos. Yeah, I'm just super dead here. Well, the Chandra making the two hasty elementals was pretty unlucky here. Hey, these little guys are great. Charming Prince to flicker the agents. Nope, it's just gonna scry. And another agent of treachery. All right, on to the next one. We're on the play facing a Keruga deck, so probably Fires of Invention. 
Um, yeah, I guess we'll keep. We've got the three different threats. Perforce's intervention to grow the Caprador. Didn't think I need Thrill. Probably gonna lead with Gideon since it lines up better against the Fairy. Do have to be mindful of uh, Bone Crusher Giant's ability against the Caprador. This could also be a Brazen Borrower, bouncing Gideon. Alright, must have been a Bone Crusher then. Alright, let's get in there. I believe in you. And we'll play Hactos. And hope not to hit two. We hit three, so can still be bounced by Teferi or blocked by a Bone Crusher, but we can easily take care of that. And there's the Fires of Invention in two. Deafening Clarion. Alright, that also gets rid of it. So this is probably a good turn for the Caprador. Can also minus six Gideon to kill the fires, but then I lose my Gideon. Which is probably not worth it. But maybe next turn I can destroy it. I believe in you, friend. Nah, hopefully this turn's not too bad. Cavalier, so they can play Karuga and then attack with uh, both at Gideon and kill him. Clarion, probably not what they wanted to play here. Opponent just passes. And concedes. Well, that's the advantage of playing rogue cards like the Caprador, is that people don't know how they actually function, and sometimes will make mistakes like these. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. I'll keep intervention, good with the Caprador. Opponent appears to be Monoret, in which case Clarion is going to be pretty key. And we do got to watch out for those Bone Crusher Giants, as we mentioned. I might thrill discarding Hactos. Or I could do nothing here. Hactos can be pretty awkward against Monoreth since a card like Bone Crusher Giant has kind of the split modes of 2 and 3 mana to either block or kill Hactos. Caprador is a more reliable win condition in this matchup. Let's play Caprador. And then next turn we'll see whether we want to grow the Caprador or play Hactos. Take four. A light of the stage finds secure the critics. And a fervent champion. Alright. I think it's uh, time to cast Clarion. Gain four. And 
Next turn I could intervention x equals 4, so put 8 counters on the Caprador, not quite enough to kill them. Phoenix gets us to 10, a response, interesting. So if I response, and then I can still intervention for x equals 2, so I put 9 counters on it, that's still not enough. So what's my play? can just kill the Phoenix, although they will be able to escape. can just keep the Caprador on defense this turn, and then next turn attack with it. Don't hate that idea. So just intervention for four this turn. And then next turn I can use intervention to kill the Phoenix and use response to maybe kill them. Slaying fire puts me to six. Shock puts me to four. Well, they almost had me here. And I guess we'll go out with intervention. Four, five. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Um, this sounds pretty awkward. So we're also missing double white for Gideon, but we do have Cathartic Reunion, so I can like get rid of Hactos and something else. I'll try. All right, I guess we'll get rid of Chandra and Hactos. For opponents playing a control deck, Gideon's going to be pretty important. Although we don't have double Y to cast him on curve. Don't think Caprador's going to be amazing against an Esper control deck. Too many ways to just destroy it. But Hactos and Gideon are the better threats in this matchup. All right, let's try and get Gideon in play. I think Gideon's still more reliable than Hactos, since it doesn't die to Shadow the Sky. Get in. Right, not sure what our opponent's up to. Hactos hits four randomly, but Shatter would kill it anyway, so maybe four is actually the better number. I see extinction events. Well, it doesn't get rid of planeswalkers, and Hactos is even, so maybe they misclicked and meant to say even. Well, that is going to cost them here. I almost could have killed him with the intervention for five, but I guess we'll keep it in hand. All right, opponent tries again, names even, gets rid of Hactos. And now we can intervention for five, and hopefully that's game. Alright, on to the next one. Uh, 
All right, we're on the play, facing a Yorion deck. I've got an okay hand, I guess. It's a bit slow with the Conqueror's Death and the Chandra. A Caprador would have been nice. But I think I still keep... And then if we find a way of discarding a card, I can maybe get rid of Chandra or the Conqueror's Death. Alright, there's a Caprador. So, not sure yet if our opponent's on the Band version or the Just Guy version. Birth. Probably start with Gideon. Can get bounced by Teferi. Maybe our opponent's just blue-whites. In which case they're gonna have a lot more counter spells than the other versions. So keeping Chandra in hand might be important. And there's the ferry. Bounces birth, so maybe they're Missing some land drops. Alright, so they do appear to be on the Jeskai version after all. Your light will cleave the darkness. Hakto is hit four. It's probably a good number. Still dies to shatter the sky. Don't worry, I got this. It's interesting that they discarded the steam vents, because they do need double rats to play Luca. But maybe they've got a bunch of lands in hand. So next turn they could make a token, play Luca, get an agent and steal my stuff. Which of course we don't like. It's kind of funny, if we had Integrity Intervention I could have just killed the opponent here by attacking for 20. So the only way I have of preventing Luca stealing my stuff is by killing Birth with Gideon. But it feels pretty awful. Because then I can just make a different play. But yeah, then having them steal Gideon and minus six would be pretty bad too. So maybe I do have to minus here. I really should have seen that coming. All right. Might seem a little drastic, but. I don't want to face Agent of Treachery next turn. And Conqueror's Death can always get Gideon back eventually. Now a Shatter the Sky would be kind of bad for me, but then I can follow up with maybe a Chandra if we draw land, or Conqueror's Death to eventually get back a threat. Right, they have their own Conqueror's Death for the Caprador. That's fine. So I could just Intervention hit him for 10. Or I could Conqueror's Death their Conqueror's Death. What's better here? I guess I don't hate Conqueror's Death the Conqueror's Death. Our opponent doesn't appear to have Shatter the Sky in hand. And yeah, Agent can steal Hactos right now. So that's also a good thing. It's gonna be another birth. But the wall also can block Hactos. Yeah, 
Deafening Claren deals damage, so doesn't kill Hactos. Since damage is prevented, and your opponent concedes. Alright. Well, we've had a lot of opponents today misplay against us. Not knowing how Hactos works, not knowing how the Caprador interacts with uh, damage-based sweepers. So there is a lot to be gained by playing a rogue strategy like the Capri Sun. But uh, yeah, overall the deck's been pretty fun to play. Bit soft to Agent if we have a giant Caprador in play, but uh, so it goes. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.